Well, welcome, folks. Mr. Bergman here. Hey, we want to talk today about the volcanoes and the atmosphere. Hey, something else comes outside of a volcano. So here's the question. What else escapes from a volcano besides lava, rock, and ash? See, the last time we talked about, well, ash and rock. And before, we talked about, we talked about lava. Well, what else comes out of there? Well, you know, there's actually something very important that comes out of a volcano that is not just lava, rock, or ash. What are they? Okay, here, the goals today. We want to understand what else comes from a volcano, which I just said. Amazing. Describe how volcanoes impact the hydrosphere and the water cycle. Indeed. Demonstrate awareness of how volcanoes affect global temperatures. They make it cold or hot? Hmm, question. And we'll also talk about some other things. Okay, so let's just move on. I've got lots of topics here. Here we go. Hey, this is the kind of the thing I want to talk about. What comes out of a volcano is, well, gases. Yes, that's right, gases. Uh-huh, not just solid particles. Because if you think of ash, ash is like a solid particle that comes out of a volcano. But we're talking about gases. Well, one of the most interesting one is water vapor. And water vapor is a gas. Of course, we think of water as water, like liquid water. Like I have a bottle of water right here. It is water, of course. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about water vapor, water gas. And you can get water gas, of course, when it's hot. But remember, volcanoes are, well, they're hot. <laughs> Amazing. Hot. So they're hot. Okay. So interesting here thing. If we go to Mount Kiliwehu, Kili, however you pronounce that, this is in Hawaii, it has 37%. If you measure all the gases, 37% of it is water. Hmm. Whoa. But extra ale? Huh, that's or, or, extra, extra ale. Oops, sorry. Erta ale. Now, here's some little bit. Come talk. There's something important to note here. Is in Kiliwehu, it's a hot spot volcano. When you have a divergent boundary, and divergent is when plates go apart, you have 77% water. And then this third volcano has a convergent boundary. That's when they come together you get 97% water. So it depends upon what type of volcano you have. Either a hot spot volcano, not a whole lot of water vapor, a divergent boundary, quite a bit of water vapor, or a convergent boundary, a lot of water vapor. Okay, got it? Good. All right. Second thing that comes out of volcanoes is carbon dioxide. <sighs> I just breathed on you. No, I didn't. Um, carbon dioxide has, um, well, it comes out of what we breathe out, exhale, carbon dioxide. But, well, guess what? Volcanoes sort of breathe out carbon dioxide. They actually, if they, this is actually very dangerous, and we'll talk about that in an example in a minute. Um, they can actually cause suffocation because, you know, uh, animals like you and me um, can't breathe carbon dioxide. It would suffocate us. We need oxygen, not carbon dioxide. Very important. All right, I'll have a look. And the last one we want to talk about is sulfur dioxide. Okay, hey, I'm still having problems with my computer. The last one is sulfur dioxide right here. And hey, sulfur dioxide is the smelly stuff. Ooh, you get near a volcano if you've been there. Oh my gosh, stink, oh whack. Whew, nasty. Okay, sulfur dioxide is the stinky stuff. It causes something called vog, which is um, volcanic fog. Huh. It also can cause warming or cooling of the earth. Hmm. Okay, and it destroys the ozone layer. We'll kind of talk about this more, but interesting thing is the sulfur dioxide. So these are the kind of three main gases that come outside, come out of a volcano. Okay, all right. Hey, and so here we some pictures. Shield volcano, no shield volcano. Uh, no gases. No. Mm -mm. This actually is a cool picture of Vog. This is a volcano, and then there's lots of uh, volcanic fog. Here we have one, um, and we just have a gas. See the gas is coming out, and it's moving off to the right. That's probably because of the wind pattern. So the wind is pushing it. And then lastly, we have another volcano where it's also the wind is pushing it. So these are the gases that come out. Not ash, not solid particles, but gas particles. Hey, this is an interesting uh, picture here. Here we have a man who is um, over a vent in, um, in uh, Hawaii. And uh, he has a stick filled with fire. And so he's going to fire. He puts the fire over this vent. I don't know if you can see the vent. It's kind of right here. And then when he puts the fire stick, it's the stick on fire. <laughs> That's what a fire stick is, over the vent, guess what? It puts the fire out. Why does it put the fire out? It puts the fire out because, well, what's coming out of the volcano is not oxygen. Let's change color. What's coming out here is carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide puts fires out. Now, if he were to put his mouth down there and breathe, he would discover that it would kill him because he needs to breathe oxygen and not carbon dioxide. Okay. Hey, here's another interesting thing uh, that uh, carbon dioxide causes. Here is a volcano. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, and you notice there's just this huge area right here of dying trees. 
You might think, oh, well, that's like beetle kill. Those of us who live in Colorado, there's these lot of trees that are dying, and it's related to some beetles who are eating the trees, basically. And, um, but that's not what's happening. It's actually carbon dioxide poisoning. And so here we have our, uh, must, oh, huh, the volcanoes, Mammoth Mountain, I knew that. So we have Mammoth Mountain, and we have this trapped carbon dioxide gas, and it goes up. It goes up through the fault line, and it comes here. And it actually gets into the root system right down here, if you look through here. gets into the root system. Now, you probably understand that um, plants like carbon dioxide, but not in their roots. They want it in the air. And so they need it in the air. And so it actually poisons the root systems. And you can see the trees over here. And these are dead trees because of the um, carbon dioxide poisoning. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. Volcanoes and climate change. All right. so. The question is, is, does this change the temperature of the Earth? If you have a volcano, can it change the temperature of the Earth? And the answer is yes. But here's something interesting. When a volcano erupts, some of the factors cause the temperature of the Earth to rise. Some of the factors cause it to fall. So it's usually about, a, you know, it's a 50-50 deal. It depends. Actually, the ash causes it to fall. But most of the gases cause it to rise. So we're talking about the gases. So this affects the climate change, but if you have lots of ash, that will lower the temperature. If you have lots of gases, it will raise the temperature. Okay, now, let's talk about an interesting story. A, a little place called, a little place, it's a big, uh, it's a, the caldera of an ancient volcano called Lake Nyos. Nyos! Okay, so we got Lake Nyos. Here's a pretty picture of Lake Nyos. And this is actually before something happened. Something very important happened. Very sad, actually. And then something, this is the after picture. Notice the water is very pretty and blue right here. And here it's nasty brown. What happened? Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, this is what happened. Um, I don't know if you know this picture here, but there's a bunch of white things right there. You know what white things are? Well, they're dead cows. Yep, all the cows died. Rapidly, and actually, it wasn't just the cows that died, but the people. Yes, that's right, the people. Well, they died. I don't know if you really see this picture. When you look at this picture, what you'll notice, of course, is that it's in. Uh, this is the caldera of the volcano. Oh, gotta change the caldera. Okay, um, right through here, um, we have. Um, it's kind of a bowl. It's a big bowl filled with a lake. Now, if you go over to this picture here on the right, if we kind of look at this down deep, what we'll see is we'll see. Um, um, this is the vent of the volcano coming up through here. And then what happens is, is that carbon dioxide and the, the, the level of the lake. Well, I really need a better color. Maybe red. Do, 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 do. Right, bright red. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is the level of the water right here. But trapped in here are a bunch of carbon dioxide in the sediments. Okay, so there's lots of sort of muddy stuff. Okay, and they get trapped, and then sometimes what happens very quickly is that what happened this sort of tragic day is all of the carbon dioxide got released up here um, at once, just like like in a moment, like you know, in just a few minutes type of a deal. And then now this entire bowl was filled with carbon dioxide. One thing about carbon dioxide is that it's more dense than air, so it tends to sink. So this whole area was filled with carbon dioxide gas, and then some of it spilled down into the valley. And unfortunately, people lived um, in this area, and of their cows as well, of course. And if you are in a place where you cannot breathe uh, oxygen, well, you will suffocate. So they died. Yeah, it was. I, I understand it was like thousands of people, and so it was a bad deal. And they somebody found you know came over the valley and said, "Oh my gosh, everybody died." So kind of sad. All right, hey, they fixed that problem though. Science, hey, has figured out the answer to the problem. And what have they done? Well, what they've done is they've actually uh, have a series of um, devices on the lake that shoot um, water and carbon dioxide. So they have a, a pipe, if you see, and they have a pipe that goes down into the sediments, and they drill down into the sediments so that they, they can just release a little bit of CO2 at a time, and as opposed to having it all happen at once and then filling this bowl and killing the people. So it's a safe place to live now, but um, it was a tragic day. I don't know the exact year. Another interesting thing that happened um, change gears now. Uh, sketch this. And we kind of talked about this, you know, a little bit with sunspots in our astronomy chapters and such. But there was such a thing called a little ice age um, between these years right here. And this is the River Thames in England. 
Now, I don't know if you anything about England, but this, the River Thames never freezes. But there's a picture, it's, it's a drawing, because they didn't have like, cameras back then, but uh, of people ice skating and playing hockey and such on the River Thames, because it was so cold. But guess what? There was a little ice age, and that is primarily attributed to the Tambora eruption, a large eruption that shot woo, lots of ash, no, no, not the gases, lots of ash into the atmosphere, which cooled the earth for a time, and then once the ash settled, it warmed back up. So yes, um, the uh, volcanoes, they can affect the temperature of the earth. Okay, good. One, uh, we got two more things, I guess. Lays, lays, what is lays? Lays is um, um, volcanic haze. So it's like the word volcano, with the word haze. And this primarily happens as um, the, uh, uh, the volcanic uh, lava and such and gases um, reach the water and it creates this gas, which basically water vapor. And the water vapor, it um, creates something called haze. How's that for cool? All right. What you need? Another interesting thing that can happen with the volcano is that it can release gases, and if the gases get too high, they can deplete the ozone. And if it depletes the ozone, bad, bad, bad. Okay, so how does that work? Draw a line. Actually, you want to uh, a print or uh, sketch this picture. This is the uh, layer called the stratosphere. Strat. Osphere. I'd probably put a call out of there because I can't spell and you can't read. Okay, stratosphere. If it gets above the stratosphere and it sends ash and particularly this SO2, remember we talked about SO2 earlier, that SO2 reacts with water because there's water up there and it makes sulfuric acid. Hmm, there's the sulfuric acid right here. That sulfuric acid then can mess with the ozone layer. Ozone is actually, if you don't know, this is a chemical O3, and ozone can get destroyed by the sulfuric acid and other things. And then that will change what's called the albedo. Now the albedo is how reflective um, the atmosphere of the Earth is. If it's um, it's uh, like the layer around the Earth that we call the albedo, how, how, how much the Earth reflects as the, or the uh, sun, you know, hits the, the energy from the sun, hits the, the Earth, and it bounces back. The albedo measures how much that is. And if you were to deplete the ozone layer, that would warm up the Earth. But of course, also, you might put a bunch of ash up there, and that could cool down the Earth. But ozone depletion is typically not a good thing, and we do not want that. And so, um, but you can't like change it. You can't say, well, let's fix this. Let's stop volcanoes from erupting. That's not possible. In fact, I saw on the news this morning that a volcano is erupting right now in the Philippines. So, hey, did anybody stop it? <laughs> no, you can't stop it. You might be able to stop a lava flow with a lot of water and junk, but you can't stop a volcano. So if it happens, well, I guess it just happens. If you live nearby, you might want to like take note of the fact that you live nearby one. Okay, hey, I think we are done with Z podcast. That's supposed to be smiley face. He looks like he's got a beard or something like that. I don't know. Okay, now he looks really ugly. That's all I like. It's like wrong. Okay.